Okay, so this is a typical cervical vertebra. The striking feature is the presence of this foramen transversarium, which transmits the vertebral artery and vertebral vein. This is a striking feature. You can see here the, the vertebral canal is triangular in shape. It was like it was circular in thoracic vertebrae. The body is transversely oval and small because it is not bearing much weight like other vertebrae below, like the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. In the thoracic vertebrae, the body has the shape of a heart, heart-shaped uh, body, but this one is trans transversely oval. But the striking feature is the presence of the foramen transversarium. Uh, this is the atlas vertebra. Obviously, it has no body. The body is has been given to the axis vertebra and is uh, represented as the odontoid process. Uh, this is an inferior view of the atlas, and this one is a superior view. How do I know? Is it just guessing, or am I using certain features here? Any idea? Okay, so what is this? You can see that it's very smooth, present on the other side as well. Yes. And what about this one? Please stay with me. Yes, it will articulate with this. And the difference is that this one is circular. If you remember the shape of the occipital condyles, they are more or less, they are kidney shaped. So that's how it will be easy to differentiate between the upper surface and the lower surface of the uh, of the atlas vertebra. And this one is the axis. Here is the odontoid process, or we call it the dense, or the odontoid process. Do you remember what type of joint is formed here? The joint is called atlantoaxial joint. It's synovial. What is the variety? Hinge, ball and socket, condyloid. It will be a pivot, and it is the joint. Sometimes they call it the the no joint. When you say no, you move your head to the side. It's the no joint. While this joint here, which is the atlanto occipital joint, it is for nodding when you say yes. So this is the atlanto occipital joint, and it is when you say yes nodding yes joint this is the body of the of the axis vertebra and as i said this is the borrowed body of the atlas which is represented as the dense here you can see the dense from above look at the it has the it has a posterior spinous process which is also bifid like other spinous processes this is how the two vertebrae they come together you can see here that the foramen transversarium, the direction is going to change a little bit because the vertebral artery is going to appear and then ascend up to the foramen magnum. Here again, you can see them together, how they articulate. And this one, it has foramen transversarium, so obviously it is a cervical vertebra, but the spine is not bifid spine. And this is C7 vertebra. Sometimes they call it the vertebra prominence because you can feel it's a spine. If this is the head, and this is the cervical spine, and so the other vertebrae, they have their spinous processes bifid, and this one has, it's a spinous process, non-bifid spinous process, but in addition to that, in the cervical region, in the back of the neck, there is a ligament, which is called the ligamentum nuci. It is located here. It's, it's quite thick ligament, and it represents the interspinous ligaments, ligaments between the spinous processes of the vertebrae. So that's why you cannot palpate on the back of the neck. If you move your, your finger on the back, you will feel the, the external occipital protuberance. And then after that, you cannot feel spinous processes because they are deep and they are covered by the ligamentum nuci until it, you reach a point where you feel the spinous process of C7. So it is the first spinous process that can be felt. The spinous process of T1 is more prominent than C7, 
But C7 is called vertebra prominence because it is the first spinous process that can be felt on the back of the neck. That's the reason why it's called the vertebra prominence.